Oh dear, that's not good. What am I going to say about this one? Welcome back. In this video, we're going to be reviewing the James Donkey A3, another 75% layout keyboard in the sub $100 category fully assembled and the sub $80 category um, in the bare bones configuration. What makes this a little different is the feature packed specification. I won't go into the specification too much, but with a gasket mount, with a hot swappable south facing RGB PCB, and with wireless capability in both the form of Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz wireless, this has the potential to be one of the best budget keyboards on the market. If this is even a half decent typing keyboard out of the box, with the potential for making it even better with mods, then it really has the potential to be a beast. On the other hand, it might not just be cheap in terms of money, it might also be cheap in terms of the type and sound and feel. I'm kind of expecting it to be the latter with all of those features packed into this keyboard at this price point. I've just got a horrible feeling it's just not going to be that good. But let's not be too pessimistic, we'll have a look and find out. Before we get started on this one, I just want to thank Mech Keys for sending this keyboard over for a review. If you've not seen it before, Mech Keys is a huge website with a massive stock of keyboards and components, and it's all really reasonably priced, and it's all really reasonably priced to ship, and you don't have to pay import fees at least i've not had to pay import fees to date they have so many brands like Akko, ajaz yunzi they even have a really good selection of kbd fans keyboards on there if you scroll down to the description below you'll find my affiliate links and discount code for mech keys which will get you i think it's five percent off that website so just go and check it out okay let's get this thing out the box and do the stock typing test Okay, let's get into some first impressions on this one after the unboxing and the stock typing test. And I just want to caveat this by saying that Met Keys don't make this keyboard. Met Keys are just an online shop and they stock lots of great keyboards. And I'm obviously saying that because this isn't going to be a very good review. So first impressions and straight off the bat, I really don't like the colorway. The top case is like this grim beige color with the rose colored um, legends on the keycaps, the rose colored accent keycaps, the rose colored knob, and then the same color on the, on the bottom cases the keyboard but for me the colorway just doesn't really work for me if you're going to go with a color like beige on a keyboard you may as well kind of lean into that aesthetic and go for like a retro colorway so like grays whites you know blacks on top of that to give it like that retro look um, and they've actually done that with one of their other keyboards for me it just doesn't work this colorway or it's at least not to my taste you might really like it the second thing that i noticed straight away is that there seems to be some lateral movement of the gasket mount system you do get this with budget gasket mount keyboard Boards, where the gasket system isn't held as captive laterally as you would perhaps like it to be. But this one is the most noticeable to me to date, and I really don't like the way the keycaps and the knob slides around in kind of the cutouts in the top case. You can even kind of move it and get it to stay slightly off center, which I really don't like. I think the typing test was underwhelming to say the least. To be fair, the stabilizers are pretty good stock, and I have to say I actually quite like the sound of the space bar, but I'm afraid that's where my praise is going to end on this one, I think. The typing sound is just so crazy thin and kind of cheap feeling if I'm honest. 
I can tell from the weight of the keyboard that this one is well dampened and I've had a look on the website. I can see that there's a silicone case foam in there. I can see that there's a switch mat. I can see that there's EVA, there's like an EVA plate foam in there as well. So the weight of the keyboard obviously comes from all that dampening. And with all that dampening and the switch pad already being in place, I really just don't hold out much hope for this one. I can't imagine the Gatoron G Pro 2.0 whites are doing this keyboard any favors. I'm really not a fan of the G Pro 2.0 lineup of switches, especially the light linears and the same goes for the keycaps really when you take the keycaps off and have a look at the quality of them they look like perfectly good quality for a key especially for a keyboard of this price but when you're typing on the keyboard it kind of just feels like the keycaps aren't going to be helping it at all and again i'm just not sure i'm going to see significant enough of an improvement by installing some decent switches and keycaps on this one for it to really interest me at all in terms of the specifications there's a lot to like about this entry level keyboard it's a useful 75 percent layout with that encoder it's gasket mount Mounted. It's south-facing, it's wireless, it has screwing stabilizer compatibility, and of course it's hot swappable, which pretty much goes without saying these days. And unfortunately, that fear that I voiced at the start of the video is kind of coming true so far. I won't know for sure until I take it apart, decide what mods I'm going to do and do those. But at least right now, it seems like that feature pack specification at this price is what's letting it down. I really like a lot of the other keyboards at this price point, like the Akko ACR75 V2, like the Keychron V series. Those keyboards leave off with the hardware and stuff for wireless capability and they seem to really focus on the quality and materials which gives you a good typing experience i'd much rather have that than this which appears to be feature packed but it doesn't really do anything very well and it's not really that nice to type with but these are just my first impressions off the unboxing and the stock typing test we're going to put our best foot forwards and we're going to get this one apart and see what's inside there so as we can get a feel for what modifications we want to do and the quality of everything as usual with gasket mount keyboard we just remove the eight case screws from underneath and lift off the top case. From here you can just carefully tilt up the plate and PCB assembly so you can unplug the daughter board from the PCB. The daughter board is obviously there to allow for the vertical movement of the gasket. You can see in the bottom case that there is that nice looking silicone case dampening pad. I don't think this will help matters in terms of the sound of the keyboard unless it sounds horrible and hollow without it which is quite likely the case. Silicone can be okay in nice sounding keyboards just to knock out some hollowness but in a keyboard like this it would probably benefit from foam dampening to give a richer sound. I'm not going to take the plate and PCB assembly apart on this one as there is an EVA foam switch mat and plate foam pad in there already so there isn't much for me to do. With it apart, one of the first things I noted is that the case is wafer thin and doesn't appear to be ABS. It may well be ABS, but it's certainly not the ABS that I know from my other keyboards. It kind of just feels like polypropylene, the thin plastic you tend to find in cheap plastic storage boxes. Regardless of what it is, I just don't think it will offer anything to the sound profile. You can see this lump of a battery attached to the underside of the PCB somehow, and it seems too big physically for the capacity. 3000 milliamp hours isn't that big in the keyboard world these these days and I'm just not sure what the idea of sticking it to the back of the PCB was. There are two sets of kick down feet for three typing angles but generally speaking I'm not seeing much that I like here. The truth is I don't really want to spend too much time modding this one when I have so many nice keyboards on the shelf waiting to be unboxed. I think the best thing I can do for you on this one is to tape up the underside of the PCB as that might yield some improvements and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a really high end set of switches and keycaps on this keyboard and I'm going to compare it to some of my other keyboards and especially some keyboards that are really relevant in comparison to this one in terms of their price point. This keyboard did have the misfortune of being tested at the same time as the KBD fans Tiger Lite. I just did a really high-end build on that one and that keyboard is by far the best keyboard that I've found so far that you can get your hands on for less than $150 in its bare bone or in that case it's in proper kit form. In terms of the typing sound and feel in terms of just looking at it as a typing keyboard it's just head and shoulders above everything else on my shelf including including my 1000 euro KBD fans Odin V2. I've built it out with a lovely set of Doom linear switches and a set of GMK keycaps and the video for that one will be out soon. And what I'll do in terms of this video is I'll show you how that keyboard sounds with those keycaps and those switches. Then I'll put the same switches and keycaps on the James Donkey A3. I'll put them then on the Keychron V7 just for a comparison. And then I'll put them on the Akko ACR75 V2. They've all had various mods done on them. The Holy mod, some of them have had the PE Foam mod. Um, but basically because of what's already in the James Donkey in terms of the EVA um, switch pad and the dampening, I'll do like a decent lube job on the stabilizers in the James Donkey 
donkey. So basically all of those keyboards will be modded to about the same level. So it really is quite an accurate comparison between the keyboards with the same switches and keycaps installed. So let's do that. Let's get that side by side underway. So that side by side was pretty damning for me. There's no amount of modding that you're going to be able to do on the A3 to get it anywhere near the Tiger Light. I also don't think you're going to be able to get it as nice as the Echo or the Keychron. I'm not going to spend too much time on my thoughts as it's pretty clear what I think about this one. I wouldn't recommend buying this to anyone really given what else is on the market. I think that we've moved on from this, like, you know, from, from these kind of cheap feeling keyboards with the price point of the Keychron V series, the price point of some of the Echo DIY kits and some of their pre-assembled keyboards you know 70 80 dollars for a barebone kit and you can get really nice keyboards just without wireless for 100 dollars you can get pre-assembled kits that are really nice so i just don't think it's worth smashing all of these features into a keyboard at the detriment of like its typing sound and feel that is with it in mind that custom mechanical keyboards are all about the typing sound and feel for me and yeah for me like i said just then no amount of features can kind of counteract this a, a bad typing keyboard is always going to be a bad typing keyboard the fact that you've got wireless wireless isn't going to make that feel any better. Of course, I say all that as quite a seasoned keyboard enthusiast at this point. I've got some pretty high-end and nice keyboards in my collection, just happened to be testing the Tiger Lite, which is one of the best keyboards I've ever used at the same time as this one. But to be honest, I'm usually really impressed by the entry-level keyboards that I've tested, especially over the last 12 months. As I've already said a hundred times in this video, the Keychron V series are excellent keyboards, the entry-level Akos are excellent keyboards, so the James Donkey has some really stiff competition in this category and I just for me it's just languishing at the bottom of the pile I think. I don't like to leave it on a negative point like that I can normally find with the other budget keyboards that I test I really do enjoy using them but this one it just didn't do it for me but it is just my opinion and I will also just say that Met Keys just sell this keyboard they don't make it I just want to re-emphasize that I still really like Met Keys as a shop but this is how it goes with keyboards sometimes I'm just not impressed with this one particularly and that's about it thanks a lot for watching and I'll catch you in the next one